Yeah, we'll cruise one more time down the Murray. Don't wave the river gums goodbye, just thank them for the shade and the stories. Tomorrow there'll be time to cry. Chapter 29. Tomorrow there'll be time to cry. Nerves can be awful things. After 44 years, I rarely suffer too badly now, but in the past, there have been occasions when it has ruined my performance. It's usually happened on live television with just one song to perform and no time to warm up. Often there's no audience, just me stuck in the middle of a television studio like a prize parrot on a perch. The television crews are usually oblivious to what you're doing, so the atmosphere can be quite cold, despite the hot lights. In the 70s, it seemed to be important to sing to the camera that had the red light on. There were always three cameras, and the floor manager would point to the camera that was on. Sandy Scott was the expert, gliding gracefully from one camera to the other. Looking at the right camera and putting on a pathetic smile used to throw me and sometimes brought me unstuck. The adrenaline would start in my stomach and creep up to my head and my brain would go into a panic, then the brain would shut down. I usually got away with it. You learn to fake the words, but it would depress me for days afterwards. One thing I've never done is resort to alcohol before a show or event to help me relax. Many entertainers I've known over the years have used alcohol to calm the nerves. Just a nip to start with, but so often the nips get bigger and it became a crutch. Others use drugs. There's nothing like a beer after the show, but I've been wary of the trap of Dutch courage, as they call it. Eventually, I realised that just forget about which camera is on, except when you really want to emphasise a line. For instance, I was singing, Is your heart still there? Here, into the camera. And you don't have to smile, just think about the words you're singing. I let the director follow me rather than the other way around. It has often annoyed me how frequently they point the camera at the neck of the guitar or on my foot when I'm singing meaningful lyrics. I was watching Adam Hill's Tonight on TV when Adam asked Bernard Fanning from the rock band Powderfinger how he handled singing about his late father and brother without becoming too emotional. I related to his question in regard to Salisbury Street and my late brother Robin. Robin was the third of us five boys, the middle brother, always a little mongrel. <laughs> you might remember that as a young boy he loved to pull the little rubber tyres off my micromodel cars, but Robin grew up to be quite the respectable country bloke. He was determined to know more about farming and studied at Dukey Agricultural College. The only difference it made that I could see was that he learned to slaughter sheep. That was a relief for Dad and me as we ate our own sheep. Rob and Debbie were living on the Murray River with their three kids. Rob loved water skiing and together with his brother-in-law had built a houseboat. In 98, the small cancer on his back that had been cut out reared its ugly head again and took over his body. He tried to be positive about it and experimented with diet and alternative methods of treatment. He didn't want any kind of sympathy. It's understandable he would spend his last days on the Murray the houseboat was beautifully built. The last time we saw each other was on the houseboat. I couldn't help thinking what it must be like admiring the ancient gum trees, knowing that before long you won't see them ever again. Rob was only 47 when he died. I wrote Salisbury Street initially as a poem to read at Rob's public funeral. Rob's mother-in-law insisted that the burial be a private affair. Mum and Dad didn't seem to have much say in it. I had a go at reading the poem, but I was hopeless. I started okay, but the emotions completely took hold of me and I wished someone else had read it. Since first reading it at Rob's funeral, I've regarded the song as a tribute to his positive attitude during the six months he faded away with cancer. It brings back memories of our childhood and it also is a Murray River song. The red gums, the sunset, the scenery on that magnificent river all combined to pass on how Rob felt about the Murray. The song is how I think I would feel if I had to contemplate not seeing the Australian bush anymore. Straight after the funeral, my daughter Amy and I flew to Melbourne to appear on Channel 9's Hey Hey It's Saturday. I know Rob would have understood that you have to carry on with your life. I was quite numb about his passing for a while. It took some time to realise he was not here anymore. 
We hadn't seen that much of each other in those last few years, so it's not as though I missed his presence. He's with me, however, every time I sing Salisbury Street, and I'm pleased that the song is popular, for his family's sake especially. I will sing it forever. Of all my brothers, Rob was probably the biggest fan of my music. Rob was good at whatever job he took on, yet I don't think he ever really felt fulfilled. Perhaps he regretted leaving the North West and his brothers. I'm sure our mateship would have developed a lot more if we'd lived closer. Rob was a great father to two beautiful girls and a fine son, and when those three children and Debbie are at my concert, I know Salisbury Street makes them proud. It took me a long time to realise how much stronger the song is when I sing it quite laid back. I think having Dave Ellis playing the bull fiddle is the reason this works. When the sound on stage is fuller, it seems to give me more time to relax into the rhythm. But perhaps it comes with maturity as well. Chandelier of Stars When my travelling days are done, will you still be with me? When all the songs have been sung, standing right beside me, watching the grandkids grow? i got everything but nothing without you. I've got mountains, I've got rivers, I've got a chandelier of stars, got blossoms on the bloodwoods, friends all around the country, and a heart as good as new. I've got everything but nothing without you. Too much time for thinking, it's going to drive me mad. I walk along the river, I watch a motel movie, but lovers make me sad. I've got everything but nothing without you. So when this life that binds me, turns me loose, lets me rest on my laurels, will you put your head on my shoulder and share the peaceful years? I've got everything but nothing without you. <laughs>